Amen. First of all, we give honor to God Almighty, and we thank him for this wonderful day. Amen. A day a long time in the making, and we thank God for, amen, his divine favor on us to bring it to fruition. Our mayor has arrived, and we're going to begin. Amen. We want to, of course, recognize, amen, Bishop Jonathan Wallace and the inner court ministry and thank them for uh, hosting and supporting this great event. Amen. This is indeed a great day, amen, for our community, amen, as we come to kick off Homegrown Baltimore and Strength to Love 2 partnership with City Farms to open up this community farm. We want to thank all of our civic leaders, our government officials for their presence here today, all of the pastors and all of our neighborhood association leaders, and then all of you for being here in support of this great multifaceted, multi-beneficial event, amen, that is going to mean so much to our neighborhood for so many years to come. Man, my name is Dr. Derek DeWitt. I'm the pastor of First Mount Calvary Baptist Church right around the corner. I am proud, amen, to be a part of this great, this great, great day. And with that said, we are going to invite, amen, Bishop Dr. Jonathan Wallace Sr. to come. He is the pastor of this great church that we stand in front of, amen, in court ministries. He is going to give us his remarks and lead us in prayer. Following that, the choir will give us another selection. Again, we're honored to host and to share with you in a wonderful day, uh, a day when we can see great, great improvement in our community, and certainly when initiatives of this uh, kind take place, uh, we are most excited. I'm glad today to have uh, present the mayor and certainly to our elected officials and to all of you who come uh, certainly with interest uh, to be a blessing uh, in this effort. We say thank you, and I'm honored to take this moment to ask God's blessing upon this occasion and certainly upon our efforts today. Let us pray. Father, again, we come to say thank you for kindness and mercy and grace. We thank you, Lord, for all of our elected officials who are present today to the Neighborhood Community Associations and to all who've come to uh, be a part of this great, great, great occasion. Lord, we ask your blessing now upon every soul that's gathered today. We ask your blessing even upon this initiative, O oh God, that it would be the seed for a tremendous harvest to come. We ask you, O oh God, as we work to revitalize this community, that you would put your hand of blessing upon it. Bless our downsetting and our uprising, our coming in and our going out. Bless us in the city. Bless us in the field. Yes. Everything our hands shall touch, God. Yes. We ask yes. your yes. blessing upon it. And even in advance, because we believe that you're a God of your word, by faith we claim that it's already done. This yes. is our prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We say amen. 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 
Amen. Many great minds went into the vision that you see behind us here today. And one of those uh, people are here with us today. And we are so, uh, this man is a great visionary. Amen. Has done so much for our community. And we are just so proud of him. We want to bring him up now for his remarks. Uh, please put your hands together and receive Elder C.W. Harris. Amen. From Newborn Holistic Ministries and Strength to Love too. I was getting ready to say, let the church say amen. amen. <laughs> the Lord be with you. We are so thankful to our mayor, the Honorable Stephen Rollin Blake, to the housing commissioner. I don't know if he's here yet or not, but uh, he's on our program in the city, uh, or his representative in the city and state officials. And to our community spiritual leaders and community organizers, residents, saints, and friends. Now, James Rouse worked here, he started his work here in 1990. They called the Community Builders in Partnership. Uh, he spoke in 1969 in a little cafe called. Uh, the Potter's House. And in his statement, he said that uh, people just don't believe that urban communities can work, that we can fight the ills of urban community. He said even paid officials, this was his quote, even paid officials, those who went to school to be social workers, they don't believe that it worked. But I am a lifelong member of this community. And uh, I have stake in this community. And I believe that it can work. I can believe that it can work. So instead of talking about it, we and other clergies united for the transformation of Sandtown and surrounding communities have said, uh, let us do something. Let us do something. So our vision is to end poverty in our community. Now some factors have to come together. And those are that we have to have support of our officials, of city government, of state government. And we have to have support of our community. And last but not least, we had to have the support of our churches. When those three factors come together and they're here today, Amen. we have Dr. Williams here from New Song Community Church. Raise your hand, my brother. He's here in our community doing the fight. And through that organization, we were able to build over 300 homes. We had Habitat yeah. for Humanities, two Habitat for Humanities. We built a $10 million school for our children there on the corner of Gilmore and Pressman Street. And we also have Dr. Wallace, who's doing a wonderful job here. These are our ministers here working together to bring about change. We cannot forget Reverend DeWitt. Yeah. You can see his church right here. All in the, now, it has to take that effort to bring about change. Yeah. We work with our women who are struggling with the addiction of drugs. We have economic development. And now we are shooting off a new thing, which we call strength of love. And this name was given to us by Dr. Martin Luther King. No man or no woman uh, can endure hardship unless they have in their hearts and souls antithesis strongly marked. You have to have those opposites strongly marked. So I am thankful for Strength to Love too because the efforts of Strength to Love too is to work with the returning citizens 
coming home from incarceration and breaking that recidivism cycle yeah. and keeping it the recidivism low. Isn't that right? Yeah. So those workers are here today. You see them right here. We have Durham. I want you to come forward, Durham. Durham want to say four words, maybe five. <laughs> well, Strength to Love is a very good program, and I'm really honored, Brother C.W., and I learned that love does three things. Love builds, love destroys, and love preserves. But when you put it in its proper perspective, if we preserve the love we build, it will never be destroyed. Amen. Amen. They're the ones that's going to grow your vegetables. They're the ones that's going to keep our community healthy. No more Snickers. No more barbecue chips. But we're going to have some turnips. We're going to have some carrots. And it will be affordable. Now, Sandtown will never be the same. It will never be the same. It will never be the same. I love my community. I love my community. So as you see behind you, we have started one, but we're going to have about 18 hoop farms constructed on this land. We won't have to use city water because we are collecting the rain. You see those little pipes that's up? Collecting the rain, and it's going to be stored there, and hopefully we'll be able to harvest fish. Tilapia. Oh, isn't that wonderful? And lake trout. The mayor hollered at lake trout. So we're going to make sure we have some lake trout. So thank you. I am so thankful for everyone. But last but not least, and I'm going to conclude my sayings, if you have any questions, check on your programs, and our phone number is there. Last but not least, I'd like to thank one person that's supported us to the hill. And she made sure that we got our programs out here, and we're celebrating our 43rd wedding anniversary. And that's my wife, Amelia Harris. She's like a gnat. She's flying all around here. So, oh, where are you? Ow! 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 Lovely! That's my wife. And we're selling, celebrating 43 years. Yeah. And I met her in Sandtown yeah. when we were 13 years old. She shrunk on me. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Elder Harris. Elder Harris, uh, Sister Harris does all the work. Elder Harris gets all the credit. But, but we know the truth. We know the truth. Next up, Mr. David Bison is the CEO, and uh, Mr. Alex Pierce, full president of Big City Farms, who are partnering with us to bring forth this great event and to have this farm here. And so we're thankful to them. Give them a hand as they come. Thank you all for being here uh, to celebrate this occasion. We're really excited and honored to be part of it. My name is Dave Bisson, and I'm a relative newcomer to Baltimore and Big City Farms. I feel really fortunate to be living in a city where people have truly welcomed me, and to be part of a company where I'm surrounded by visionary and practical partners and teammates like Alex. How are you doing? I'm, I'm Alex Parcel, and I'm the president of Big City Farms. Uh, I'm going to be real quick and just explain what we're doing back here. We like to call what we're doing intensive biological farming. So inside these hoop houses, we'll be able to grow equivalent of what, on one acre of hoop houses, equivalent of six acres of conventional farming. And we do it without pesticides, herbicides, or any registered chemicals. Hey! Organic. Yes. 
so today I, I'd like to just quickly recognize some of the people who have made this day possible and share a few thoughts about urban farming in Baltimore. First, uh, urban farming works. Thanks to Alex's farming expertise and ingenuity and the hard work of our employees, including Chris Zorn, Rob Dunn, Anthony Dye, and Kurt Furlow, Big City Farms produced more than $110,000 worth of produce in 2012 on our first half-acre half hoop house farm in South Baltimore. And we're on a path to generate annual sales of more than $150,000 per half-acre farm. Those numbers mean that organic urban farming and hoop houses like the ones behind us can not only grow healthy food in our city and contribute to a greener and more vibrant urban landscape, which are uh, worthy goals in and of themselves, but it means that this kind of farming can also grow economic opportunity for hundreds of Baltimore residents and their families by creating good paying jobs and growing, processing, and selling homegrown produce. Second, <clears throat> we have an opportunity as individuals and sometimes as members of organizations and institutions to strengthen Baltimore's urban farming sector and our local food economy by purchasing locally grown food. Big City Farms would not be where it is today without the support of our customers, who include hundreds of shoppers at farmers markets and some of Baltimore's finest restaurants. If we all choose to support growers right in our backyard, instead of sending our food dollars to Florida, California, or other parts of the world, we will see more urban farms, more local food, and more new farming jobs, which are all good for Baltimore. Third, the urban farming movement in Baltimore is and must continue to be an inclusive movement. The members of the Farm Alliance of Baltimore City have done groundbreaking work to include small farms and new farmers in the urban farming movement by excuse me, providing farm training, a shared brand, a cooperative farmer's market stand, and other resources. The staff at Real Food Farm and many other farms around Baltimore are including more Baltimoreans as consumers of locally grown healthy produce by directly selling their produce at affordable prices in Baltimore's food deserts. For big city farms, this event represents our first major effort to include a nonprofit human development organization in Baltimore's urban farming movement by sharing our farming knowledge with Strength for Love too. We've been privileged to work with an organization as visionary and committed to success as Strength of Love too on this farm and we plan to continue sharing our knowledge and business infrastructure with other organizations and individual farm entrepreneurs, even those with limited or no prior farming experience, to help them become successful operators of urban farms and to grow Baltimore's urban farming industry to its fullest potential. We'd like to recognize <clears throat> several more people and organizations who have made this possible. Uh, first, and again, Elder C.W. Harris, and also Will Long, the farm manager at this site, and the entire staff, yeah. the entire staff of Strength of Love too. Uh, we want to thank the city of Baltimore, especially uh, Abby Cock and Rochelle Celestin for their guidance in securing and developing this site. Uh, and of course, Mayor Rawlings Blake uh, for her leadership in making Baltimore a national example of how public policy can support a thriving urban farming sector. Uh, also, we'd like to thank Jacqueline Carrera and Guy Hager of the Parks and People Foundation for supporting the construction of a rainwater and <clears throat> harvesting system that will increase the environmental benefits of this farm. We also like to thank the founders of Big City Farms, including Brian Leggett, Tom Handworker, and Ted Rouse for their vision and continued commitment to our success. And uh, <clears throat> finally, we'd like to thank the members of the uh, farm construction team who have been working hard for the last several weeks to get this site ready for farming. They include Charlie Doble, Samuel Fleming, Daryl Cooper, Damon Layton, Sean Brown, Marcus Brown, and Warren Rhymes, who I'd like to in invite to the podium now to just say a few words. Good afternoon. Um, this is a blessing, man. I'm, I'm just honored that I get to thank our wonderful man, Person, for bringing urban farming to Baltimore City and to my neighborhood. Um, I would like to thank uh, Elder Harris 
um, brother Charlie Doble, and the guys that I'm, I'm out here with every day, sweating bullets, you know, <laughs> making it happen so we can have fresh produce, fresh vegetables for our community. Um, brother Willie right here, as you, you know, that he he's he's one of the, the top farmers that we have out here. He, this guy showed me everything it is to know about farming. I, I'm a first time farmer, so, <laughs> And um, another guy that I just like to bring to you to your attention is um, guy brother Alex right here with the Oreos hat on. This this guy's from he's he's not from Baltimore. He's from Arkansas. I learned so much from this guy. Is is I can't even put it into words. I, I just, I'm just I'm just so blessed to be a part of this project. And again, I like to thank our, our mayor for bringing it to our city in my neighborhood. Thank you. Thanks, Warren. Uh, on behalf of Big City Farms, uh, thank you again for being part of this event today and for your continued support of urban farming in Baltimore. Thanks. Uh, the Deputy Commissioner for Land and Resources for Baltimore Housing is here with us, Ms. Julie Day. She will come at this time. Thank you. Give her a hand. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everybody. What a fun morning and what great weather. We need a little rain to make the good stuff grow. We need the sunshine, too. we got a good mix here. Thanks for having me. And I want to really commend the community here for welcoming this project here into Sandtown. I really want to talk to the mayor and thank her for her leadership. She and Commissioner Graziano launched a program about two and a half years ago called Vacants to Value. It's all about blight elimination. A lot of times we think of it about rehabbing vacant properties as Mike and, and Habitat have done throughout this community for many, many years. We think about it as demolishing properties that are blighted. But we also have lots like this and we need to take advantage of them. So what the mayor charged us with doing is working with our partners within city government and figuring out what can we do with these kind of pro properties. And so we formed a partnership with Beth Stroman and Office of Sustainability and Abby and Rochelle and I will all work together with the Department of Planning and said, let's find some farmers that can make use of this land. So we put out a call for farmers. Big City Farms surely answered, so did Strength to Love. But you know what we did? We said, Strength to Love, we think you guys aren't quite farmers yet. You got a great idea, you got a great program, but why don't you try to find one of the other guys to work with? And here now we have this partnership that's really on the ground doing good work and ready to grow. So we really, it was that, that charge to like work together, make city government work better for the people of Baltimore. And that's what we're here trying to do. And I think this is a good example of it. You know, there's an old phrase of, you know, killing two birds with one stone. I want to throw that phrase away. I want you to put it out of your head and let's spin it in a positive way. How about feeding two birds with one seed? Yeah. How, many, how many birds are we feeding with this seed? We're eliminating blight, we're creating jobs, yes. we're providing good, healthy, fresh food, mm -hmm. we're helping with re-entry, we're, we're building community here. So every time you, th you know, you, let's feed as many birds as we can with the seed yes. and keep the good work going. Yes. Thank you so much for letting Wonderful me be a part of it. Keep, keep the faith. Just before our mayor comes, we're, we're blessed to have with us, amen, one of our Maryland representatives, uh, Maestro Delicate Keith Haynes yes. is here with us. Yes. And so we want to give an opportunity for him let me say before he comes that um, Delegate uh, City Councilman, I'm sorry, uh, Mosby, uh, was trying to make it here from Washington so he would have an opportunity to speak, but he hasn't arrived yet. So um, we just want to give um, a kind regards on his behalf. Um, he wanted so much to be here. So put your hands together and receive, if you will, amen, Delegate uh, Keith Haynes. Uh, first of all, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is a great morning. Good, great things are happening here in the community. I'm going to be very brief, and that is simply this. Uh, as you look around to the right of you, to the left of you, in front of you, and behind of you, you see that there, are, there is someone, someone who may be from around the corner, a certain block in this neighborhood, or a community organization. But one thing holds true when you survey everybody here today. And there's one little saying that I like, and I think it holds true today. Working together works better. Amen. And we are better for it 
for working together under the initiative uh, or the guidelines or the vision set by a mayor and all the city agencies, the community partnerships, the churches, and even I think there's maybe a little state money in there trickling down somewhere. Yeah. So all of us working together makes it work better. And I'm just excited uh, about one day having the fresh, first fresh turnip yeah. from this farm. We got it now, we give it to you. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, I didn't know I was supposed to introduce the mayor. I thought they brought their own introductory person with them. They, but they told me I have to do it, so, amen. But it is a distinct honor and a privilege to introduce, amen, this national and local leader in urban agriculture. We thank her for, amen, embracing the vision that we can, we can make a difference as it relates to agriculture and the way we eat and health and everything else in this city. And so it gives me great pleasure to present to you um, our mayor, the Honorable Stephanie Rollins Blake. Thank you and good morning everyone. I want to thank everybody for being here on this beautiful, beautiful day in West Baltimore. I'm so proud. And if you are never proud about Baltimore, just look around you. Just look around you. This is a wonderful, wonderful day. And it speaks to what we know as a progress for Baltimore. And I think I want to thank Bishop Wallace, Pastor DeWitt. I want to thank Big, Big City Farm Strength to Love. I want to thank Lucy Snodgrass from USDA. And I also want to thank our organ playing and singing delegate, Keith Haynes, for being here as well. And all of the members of my team who are here. And I'm just going to ask a few people to come up and stand with me. I want this young man. Where's Where's Mr. Will? Come on up here. Where's What happened to Alex in his in his baseball hat? Where's Alex in his baseball hat? Come on, come on, my friend over here from Real Food Farms. Come on. Now, for the kids who are here, this is this is what farmers look like. This is what farming looks like in Baltimore. You know, I'm excited to be here at Strength to Love Farm in Sandtown, Win Winchester, less than a year ago. The land before us was an example of some of the, s the worst problems that vacant land, come on, there's room for all of us. This is what farming looks like. This, this, this land was what part, of, part of the problem. Some of the worst things that can happen on uh, vacant land, overgrown uh, weeds, vines, illegal dumping. Every time I know I passed and you passed, you didn't see promise, you saw a problem. Mm -hmm. Today it has been transformed and it is producing fresh, healthy produce as well as jobs for the people of the city of Baltimore. This would not have been possible without the energy and enthusiasm of every single person here. And I want to recognize the dedication and the vision and the hard work of Big City Farms as well as Strength to Love Too is one of the amazing support and the passion of the faith-based organizations who are here today. Amen. This is not the first time I've said it. City government can't do it alone. I have to be able to look out and depend on leaders in the faith community to stand in the gap, to recognize that, that there is a place for all of us in, a, in uplifting our communities. And you know your congregation and the community that you serve look to you to be those leaders. And I'm so blessed in Baltimore to have a strong, um, a, a strong cadre of faith leaders who are willing to stand up and to do not just the ordinary, but the extraordinary, the innovative, to create opportunities and promise in our city. I especially want to thank Intercourt Ministry, Intercourt, Intercourt Ministries and the First Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Thank you for all that you do. So in October 2011, I joined with other U.S. mayors and the First Lady, Michelle Obama's Food Access uh, Summit in Chicago to discuss the issues of low and um, inequitable access to healthy food in our country. And as an outcome of that summit, the U.S. Conference of Mayors formed a food policy task force with Mayor Menino, Tom Menino of Boston serving as chair, and uh, I'm serving as vice chair. The task force identified city-based homegrown strategies as a priority for building stronger neighborhoods. Over the past year and a half, Baltimore has been formulating its own 
homegrown strategy because that's how we like it in Baltimore. Homegrown, known as homegrown Baltimore. Grow local, buy local, eat local. The three components of homegrown Baltimore address the production, the distribution, and the sales of local foods and the consumption of local food. We can't forget that. To us, it's not merely a cool trend or just a fun idea, even though it is fun. Currently, one out of every four children in Baltimore is living in a food desert. What does that mean? That means that they have little access to fresh and healthy food. And in our city, we have an epidemic of health problems related to obesity and poor diet. This is an unacceptable situation. But by working together, we can make sure that the citizens of Baltimore are able to access fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. Homegrown Baltimore will be our pathway to accomplishing this healthy charge. We're here today celebrating the success of Homegrown Baltimore's Grow Local, Grow Local Vision. One of Homegrown Baltimore's first steps has been this land leasing initiative. This initiative identifies appropriate tracts of land, like we're sitting, standing in today, vacant land that are not slated for development in the short term. And we lease that to uh, qualified farmers. Strength to Love Farm is the first such site to be leased through this program. I want to give them yeah. Yeah. I couldn't be more proud of the effort and their, their work to get us to this point. Just last week, we uh, executed the initiative's second lease, the second time with Real Food Farms for an acre and a half land in South uh, Clifton Park. We're also in discussion for two additional leases with Five Seeds Farm. And what makes these farms special is that they're all homegrown, all examples of Baltimoreans solving local problems and creating local opportunity for ourselves and for our community members. By using vacant land for urban agriculture, we can make a dent in some of the most pressing problems that face our city. We can remove the blight and the burden of under-maintained land and create jobs, opportunities, and increase access to fr uh, fresh and healthy food, and ultimately create stronger, more vibrant neighborhoods for our citizens. So I, I, I visited uh, Mayor Menino for a, a food uh, council, U.S. Conference of Mayors Food Council meeting. And as we toured uh, Boston, he showed me his, um, the, the, the urban model for some of the supermarkets he had. And he also pointed out some of the, the neighborhood farms that he had. And, and many of you probably don't know this, but I'm a tiny, tiny bit competitive, just a little bit. And I looked around, and I said, if they can do this in Boston, we can do it better in Baltimore. <laughs> And that's why I said I had to bring up these, these young men. And I know we have women farmers that just we don't have a, 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 a whole representation because I met them. But I wanted to bring up these gentlemen to show you how we're going to do it better. Because we have a team with passion that are driven by a mission for better for their communities. So, you know, we're leasing out the land, but it's not all that we're doing for homegrown Baltimore. This summer, we will be releasing an urban agriculture policy plan for public comment, which will provide concrete steps for how the city of Baltimore can continue to support urban farms and farmers, community gardeners, and other uh, others who are producing fresh food right here in our city. With the adoption of Transform Baltimore, the city's new zoning code, both community gardens and urban farms will be recognized with their own use categories for the very first time. In uh, 2012, the Baltimore City Health Department updated its animal code to allow for the keeping of more chickens, bees, uh, these things weren't previously allowed, and an end for, to allow for the keeping of dwarf, miniature, and pygmy goats for the first time in the city. Through these efforts and more, we're making concrete progress in meeting one of our green and goals of Baltimore's sustainability plan. To establish Baltimore as a leader, that's why I said if they can do it in Boston, we can do it better here, a leader in sustainable local food systems. I know we're going to do it. In the process, we're also improving our quality of life, creating a better future for residents, and growing Baltimore, figuratively and literally. And I want to thank, uh, take a moment to give special thank you to all of the volunteers who contributed their hard work to the Strength to Love Farm, uh, Pete Flanagan and Sons for donating equipment, <laughs> International Union of Operating Engineers Local 37 yeah. for donating workers. Yeah. Yeah. Parks and People Foundation for their rainwater harvesting system, and all of the other partners who contributed to making today a success. 
I know, I know that homegrown Baltimore will be a success. I know it because I'm looking at all the partners that are going to make it. So I can't wait to get our first, uh, our, our my my first basket of uh, fresh vegetables. <laughs> I'm also looking forward to, I think you should, there's some kind of special dispensation for, for Lake Trout Fried Heart if it comes from Baltimore, <laughs> from an urban farm, right? right? I think, I don't know if the calories come off or it all of a sudden becomes better for you, but that's my, well, we can say a prayer. Right. <laughs> but I'm waiting for it. I'm going to have a whole dinner, and it's going to be right from uh, Sandtown, Winchester, and I can't wait. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Blake. We're about at the end of the close of our ceremony. We are going to, uh, in a minute, walk up and we're going to cut the ribbon on this great farm. But before we do that, we want to invite even one of our, let me say this, um, I, I think someone mentioned it, but we don't want to neglect to mention and thank once again Local 37. Um, we certainly want to thank them, engineers and operators, and then P. Flanagan for time and materials. We want to thank them also, because without them. And um, another great leader in this community. We are, we are just um, so proud. This community, Sandtown, Winchester, I tell you, I was born and raised in Baltimore. And I left, and I just got back here six years ago to pastor this great church. And I've been introduced to so many great leaders, and one of such is the Reverend Dr. Uh, Thurman Williams, they've been the pastor of New Song Community Church. Yeah. Amen, the, a great, great visionary, great man of God. He's gonna come, he's gonna give us our closing prayer and benediction, and after he does that, we're gonna follow the mayor up to the ribbon and have our ribbon cutting ceremony. And after that, amen, we'll have music, and there's food over here on the parking lot for you. Now, there's no meat over there. Fresh vegetables and fresh fruit over there. I, I, I will tell you, we have uh, shish kebab, but it's all fruit. All right, so, all right, so after we cut the ribbon, and we have would have already had benediction, so you'll be released to go over there and enjoy some refreshments with us. Thank you so much for coming, and God bless you. God is still good, huh? All the time. And all the time. God is good. I'm so thankful that so oftentimes it seems that all people think about when they think of Baltimore is a place where people are dodging bullets. But our brother has reminded us that we're much more characterized by people who are sweating bullets to bring hope to our neighborhood. May that be what we're known for more and more. Let's look unto the God who gives us the strength to love. Father, we thank you that you sent your son to preach good news to the poor yes. and recovery of sight to the blind yes. and release for the oppressed and freedom for the prisoners. But you didn't just send them to talk about it. You sent them to be about it and to do it. And you do that through your people. Thank you, God, for this group that you have brought together to see those things happen in our neighborhood. And God, we look to you because the Bible tells us you are able to do immeasurably more than all we might ask or even imagine. How, according to your power, that's at work within us. To you we give all the glory and honor in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's all God's people said, Amen. Amen.